Okay, tonight what we started to dive into is uh, one of the workers that's been doing some handyman work around here the other day brought this over to have us test. It was the Trip Light 300 watt power verter. And uh, we attached it to 12 volts after we determined polarity. And uh, of course it didn't work. But the person that had given it to him sweared that it had worked, but any event. So we opened it up and we took a look inside. And here's what we found. The little fan, fuse, holder. Um, but I noticed in this area here, let me get a pointer here, this area around, I'm going to get some focus here. The area around this this chip right here was all corroded. It's it's green. It's been some corrosion. The bottom looks okay. Is there a little alarm speaker? The input again is over here. It's well documented, positive and negative. And uh, there were two resistors here. And this is what they looked like. Little eighth watt. Let me get some focus again here. These little eighth watt resistors here were um, they were like rusted. They were they were there were two resistors that looked very bad. And I tried getting a reading off one. I think I got 30k off one, and I got nothing off the other. And uh, out of all of them, it was the only two that were that were fatigued like that. And that was it was R11 and R7. This one here. I've gone ahead and replaced them with quarter watt resistors from our our donor, the realistic uh, graphic equalizer, had both values. And not to be lazy, but I uh, was guessing around the numbers, there was enough on these resistors with the magnifier that I could just barely make out some of the colors on them, barely. So there was a site here. It's a uh, kind of lazy but it's uh, hobbyhour.com and I just simply punch in what after determining what I felt was the best value I got the green blue and red and gold is the is just the uh, tolerance so green is five blue is six and red is the multiplier so it's five six with two zeros five six with two zeros is five point six K ohms when you move the decimal over three places for thousands so we got a 5.6 and we put it in here and then we looked up the other one which I going back and forth back and forth and judging by the ones around it I had one color missing it was black and orange but I couldn't tell what the first one is so I took a guess and I just put a 10k in because there's a 10k here, here, there's a lot of 10Ks. So I'm going with the 10K. I could find the gold and I could find the I could find the the end with the gold. I could find the gold, the orange, and I think the black. So I just guessed at 10K. So we threw a 10K in there. And uh just happen to have a 12 volt power supply that we got the other day it's also a trip light not by any by some coincidence so we turn our supply on and I gave it a test I have a, a lamp with like a 40 watt bulb in it and we'll give it a whirl the fan starts and after a couple seconds it begins to work. I won't run it too long because I don't have the heat sink shields on. But there you have it. The repair of the trip light 300 watt power verter. Of course no, no schematic or model or anything. It's just this stuff that you they make and it fails and it's made to throw be thrown away. But someone comes to you and wants a 300 watt
power inverter for charging their hand tools, their rechargeable cordless drills and whatnot. We try to help them out. So there you have it. That's the end of the trip light power verter. And we'll kick the power off here. And that'll do it. Thanks for watching. Oh, one last thing. I decided I'll, I'll put the uh, meter leads in the other socket and we'll take a reading of the voltage. And like I said, I, I may have guessed at the 10K value, but I think I was actually able to read the value of that one that was missing its legs. The other one read like 31K or something. The other one was definitely bad, but I was able to get a reading off one of them. So there really wasn't any guessing work. So we got 113 volts on the meter, and if you use a true RMS meter, it will say 120. I'm pretty certain I've done that before. So we'll kill the power here, and that's a wrap again for the trip light 300 watt power inverter. Okay, one last last thing I figured I'd show while we put this this unit back together here. Is I'm still missing uh, the four original screws from the front, so I just staggered two and two for now until I find the original four screws. A note on the back here um, the pain in the neck part was they put a tamper proof screw here, of course, because they don't want you in here taking this thing apart uh, to hold the uh, heat sink on those uh, input transistors there. The fuse I know is 30, it's overrated, I believe that was only a, a 20 in there. We'll replace that with the proper one, but what I want to say in closing is um, the strain reliefs here, back in the day a lot of old radios and that, everything you look at will have this type of strain relief, and they would usually say HECO on them, H-E-Y-C-O, well, before the uh, International Electronics Revolution here, uh, everything said HECO on it, it made these strain reliefs. So, um, if you look up, there's a tool that they made called a Heiko tool, and what it does is, I have the Chinese equivalent here, because the Heiko tool is quite expensive, I haven't come across one, but what it allows you to do is to squeeze these darn fool strain reliefs out of here without damaging the cabinet or chassis or whatever you're working on, so it, it's angled in a way to grab it and squeeze it so you can pull them out. It's a special tool made for taking out these strain reliefs. It's called a HACO tool. But you can get a knockoff imitation, not as well made, etc., for less money to get you by until you can get your own HACO tool. So that's it. Thanks for watching.